Another big topic, we reported before that the first lady, according to polls, was more popular than the president. Well, now there's a new poll out showing that the secretary of state, Hillary Clinton, is more popular than the president. Contessa is live at the politics desk to break it all down. Contessa. Uh, Tamron, it was not true at the end of primary season, but Hillary Clinton can claim a victory of sorts over her one-time rival, Barack Obama. This new CNN opinion research poll shows Secretary Clinton has a 71% approval rating. The president at 64%. Let's talk to Jim Vandehei, executive editor for Politico. Uh, Jim, do you think her popularity is in part because she's acting like such a team player? Mm -hmm. Uh, I think that's a good point, Contessa. There's no doubt that her popularity probably reflects more what she's not doing than what she is doing. You know, there's no Clinton drama. There's not been a lot of stories about Bill Clinton's fundraising or any other controversial acts by the Clintons. And most of the coverage has been focused on how she's doing things overseas, she's getting along with Obama, and she's sort of finding her own uh, path over at the State Department. So I think that's all reflected in those numbers. I think her unpopularity came in part from Democrats during the primary who didn't like the Clinton and in big part from Republicans who just found her and her husband to be totally toxic. Well, now those Republicans are training, I think, the bulk of their frustration on Barack Obama and the White House uh, in general. The, the interesting thing is you would think that the storyline about that rivalry between Clinton and Obama may have uh, subsided by February. But here was Hillary Clinton last month in front of the House Foreign Affairs Committee. Let me play it. President Obama won the election. He beat me in a primary in which he put forth a different approach. And he is now our president, and we all want our president, no matter of which party, to succeed. The thing is, that appears not to be just the public stance, but Andrea Mitchell is reporting that Obama and Hillary have formed a real bond here. In what way do you think that she's so effective that people are willing to give her that approval rating? Well, I think part of it is she's always been a very smart politician, and it's crystal clear that in this administration there'd be zero tolerance for anybody who is sort of creating a rivalry. There hasn't been any of that friction, at least uh, this part, in the administration. I do caution that let's see what happens when there really is disagreement in this White House, when there is uh, sort of a moment of tension where it could be Hillary Clinton's view against Barack Obama and see how that's handled. I always thought that this relationship would be perfect for the first year, but the real test would come when there is uh, some sort of screw up overseas or, or some internal friction, and that's when you sort of get the worst, if you will, uh, of the Clinton operation because they're very protective of her, very protective of her well, speaking... image, and often at the expense of other folks in the Democratic Party. That's been the rub uh, on the Team Clinton. Speaking of the other half of Team Clinton, then, uh, Bill Clinton, there was a lot of concern about what his role would be. Has he just been a silent, out-of-sight partner? Largely, he has been. There has not been many stories about him. He's tried to sort of pull back, uh, at least from some of his activities overseas. Uh, remember, when she took the job, there was new restrictions placed on his ability to do fundraising uh, and other operations. And it seems like so far he has abided by that. Uh, you know, it's one thing that investigative reporters here and, and other places will be looking at is does he continue to stick to the letter of that agreement and is there any conflict of interest? There hasn't been any big stories about it thus far. That doesn't mean that it won't happen. And again, remember, yeah. Hillary Clinton's position is, is a diplomat. She's a diplomat internally and externally. And, and as being a peacemaker, I think she's she is getting a little bit of uh, the glow that comes with that both overseas and here. And I think most of the folks at the top of the administration, because Barack Obama's popular, are remain popular too. Again, it's 100 days. It's a honeymoon yeah. period. Let's check back in a year and see if that still well, remains. You know, it's interesting because for a woman who was seen as being so divisive and such a lightning rod, it's got to feel good to see your approval rating that high. Jim, it's good to see you today. Thank you. Good to be here. Secretary Clinton is more popular, well, gets a higher approval rating than the president himself. 71% approve of the job Secretary Clinton is doing compared to the president's 64% approval rating. But President Obama doesn't seem to mind. In just a year, the two have gone from bitter rivals to very good friends. With me now, MSNBC contributor, Washington Post editorial writer, Jonathan Capehart, and Christina Bellantoni, who's a White House correspondent with the Washington Times. Christina, to what would you attribute Hillary Clinton's jump in approval? Uh, well, there's a lot of things. Obviously, she's out there talking about a very positive message. 
representing the entire United States, talking about friendship with other countries, talking about ways that uh, we can improve international relations, as opposed to when you're out there attacking an opponent, you're going to lose some favorability ratings. But I think a lot of this also is that she's doing a good job. She's out there. She's earning a lot of really positive press in all of the different countries she's visited. She's getting a lot of high marks from the reporters that cover her daily at the State Department. So I think uh, she's earning those high approval ratings. You know, sometimes, Jonathan, uh, when you put a square peg in a square hole, things fit perfectly. Is this just an issue of her being in the right job for her and being able to excel at what she does? Uh, certainly. I think that's a, a perfect analogy. I mean, Senator, well, it's Senator, Secretary Clinton um, is extremely popular ar around the world. And I think that if anything that's surprising uh, about that about that approval rating is not that she's a team player because she proved she could be a team player during the general election. What's surprising here is that someone who was once viewed as the most polarizing person in American politics has now totally remade herself and is now someone who in that one poll is more popular than the president. So, Christina, let me um, play what Hillary Clinton had to say last month in front of the House Foreign Affairs Committee. Mind you, several months after Obama had been in the White House and she had been at the State Department. Right. Election. And he beat me in a primary in which he put forth a different approach. And he is now our president and we all want our president no matter of which party to succeed. Um, do you think that this is still a storyline? I mean, is the, the sort of rivalry of the campaign really bleeding over into April? Uh, no, I don't think so. I, I think that she's acknowledging the facts. That was uh, the answer, I believe, to a question somebody asked her about their difference in opinion on foreign policy and, and her saying, look, he won. I'm now representing the Obama administration. And she has really shown no signs of going against that. And, and the But White everybody House else really wants it to be a storyline, right? <laughs> oh, the but White everybody House else really wants it to be a storyline, right? <laughs> oh, I, I think that she's acknowledging the facts. That was uh, the answer, I believe, to a question somebody asked her about their difference in opinion on foreign policy. And, and her saying, look, he won. I'm now representing the Obama administration. Um, you, you made a comment that uh, I quote with great respect in July of 2007 in another context, I want to admit, in which you said, and I quote, with regard to potential meetings with uh, North Korea, Venezuela, or leaders of Cuba, you said, quote, I will not promise to meet with the leaders of these countries during my first year because you said, and I quote with much agreement, I don't want to be used for propaganda purposes. And so my question, Madam Secretary, is in light of your previously stated insight, uh, isn't it true that having the President of the United States be seen on the world stage warmly greeting a virulent anti-American socialist dictator that intentionally or unintentionally, our president was used for propaganda purposes, to borrow the phrase that you used. I'm going to give the secretary uh, a, a, a little bit of time to, because you characterized an earlier comment that she made to respond. Thank you, Chairman. Well, Mr. Pence, I have lived a long time now. I grew up at the height of the Cold War when we were on the hair trigger alert of nuclear war. I remember virulent anti-American communist dictators threatening our country on a regular basis. And I remember our presidents meeting with them, shaking their hands, and negotiating. They did not do so without conditions or without strong principles, but they did so. I've also seen us establish normal relations with Vietnam. I have seen the 30 years of normalized relations with China, and I don't think there is any contradiction between standing strongly for our principles and our values and pursuing the give and take of diplomatic encounter and negotiation where appropriate. We eventually created an environment in which we could see some changes that benefited the United States of America. That is my bottom line, Mr. Pence. My bottom line is I am here to serve my country, which I have loved ever since I was a little girl. And I'm going to support my president because he is committed
to doing whatever he can in the time he is given to serve to make this a better, safer, more secure world. There are different approaches. I respectfully say we spent eight years trying to isolate Chavez, and what has been the result? I don't think it's been in America's interest. So we're going to try some different things, and I respect your disagreement. We want as bipartisan a foreign policy as possible, and we have, wherever we can, reached out, and we'll continue to do so to members of this committee and others. We want your constructive criticism. We want your feedback. But President Obama won the election. He beat me in a primary in which he put forth a different approach. And he is now our president, and we all want our president, no matter of which party, to succeed, especially in such a perilous time. So I appreciate your strong feelings, but I think that uh, we are pursuing a course that uh, uh, may very well open up some additional opportunities that we hope will be in our interests and advance our values and protect our We security. have a common task and a common challenge. Why can't we see that we are all in this together?